Good morning, community, and welcome to Meet Me Mondays. On today, February the 21st, I had to level set this morning and say, what day is it? February the 21st. So good morning and welcome. Welcome right on into the community on this morning. I invite you to go ahead and invite another queen friend, tag them on the shoulder, wake them up, um, let them know that we're in our Bible study on this morning. And I'm going to go ahead and delve in because I have a couple of things that I want to just share at the top of the lesson and then we'll deep dive into our into our theme 22 making moves. So quickly, um, last evening, I wanted to remind some of us, I felt that impression from the Lord and then when I looked back at the video, there were some choppy points. So I wanna make sure you got these two nuggets really quick. One was to invite our daddy God into your details. I want to remind us to do that um, all throughout the week, invite daddy God God to be a part of your details. He really does care for us. He is concerned about us. He's in the nuances of our lives. There's nothing too small that he cannot handle. And I was sharing with a friend last week, while this may seem like a very minute thing to someone else, I had two very critical meetings that I needed to be a part of today. And I had them kind of rolling around in my head, kind of brainstorming some ways to solve them. Neither were, were, were meetings that I desired to be absent from or could maneuver or change because the settings and the times involved a larger number than myself, groups and the like. And um, and I'm telling you, um, all of a sudden I got cancellations. And I say all of a sudden because I hadn't worked it out. I got cancellations for one of the meetings and it was moved to, to tomorrow. And it is because today is President's Day and that organization is closed today. And I'm just saying that in the smallest of things, like for me, I literally said, thank you, Daddy God because I needed to be at both. And I did not have a way to maneuver either. They were beyond my control. But Daddy God already knew that he had a solution for me uh, as we've been saying in the pipeline, he already knew that this meeting would be canceled because of this, that, and the other. And so it just reminded me that he really does care about us. I don't even remember mentioning it out loud in prayer. It was just rolling around in here, but God goes before us and he works out the nuances and the details of our life. So if you are carrying something, sis, if you're carrying something, friend, and you've been stressing and just trying to figure out how to work through that, remember Remember to cast your cares upon the Lord and let him take care of you, right? And for many of us who are accustomed to being self-sufficient, to surviving, to making our own way, hustlers, go-getters, a super mom, simple woman, whatever that is, that can be difficult. We can we can allow casting our cares on the Lord to slip through the cracks because we're so focused on making something happen. This week, I invite us to all be reminded, myself included, that Daddy God cares about the details of our lives. Let's pause right there because I, I feel him differently this morning. I want to be sensitive to what he's saying. Let's pause right there, y'all, and let's just breathe. I invite everybody to inhale and exhale. For those of you like myself who may have been running all over the place doing a whole lot of stuff, Let's just remember that God is holding us in the palm of his hands. Amen. If you receive that on this morning, go ahead and take another deep inhale and exhale. Yeah. And I know that's easier said than done. Casting care is on the Lord. But let's be conscious of that on this morning. Good morning to all of you who are joining in. Now, number two, and this is another thing that I'm just, I, y'all, I feel God. I, I feel God differently this morning. And so I'm, I'm believing that there are nuggets that he wants me to drop into our spirit so that we can be stabilized. So receive this. This is nugget number two. And whoever's tracking and doing notes for me this morning, if you'll just capture that, because some people are audio learners. They they hear it. They get it when I'm speaking it. Other people are visuals. And if I had the way, I would be on PowerPoint so they can see it. They can read it. So help us this morning, those of you who are taking notes. So here's first nugget number one is to remember to invite Daddy God into your details. Number two is simply this. There are going to be things that you're going to face, that I am going to face. Like he set this in my spirit. I was shouting it out with my girlfriend, Kim, about this just last week. There are going to be things that you are going to face, that you have faced before. But everybody say this time. If you will, write there in the notes, because I want you to receive it in your spirit. Everybody say this time. This time. This time you are going to be victorious. There are going to be 
enemies that you're going to face that you've seen before. There are going to be temptations that you're going to face that you've seen before. There are going to be issues that you're going to face that you have seen before. But this time, everybody say it, say it, audio, put it into your own uh, atmosphere this morning. This time, everybody say it with me this time. Come on, say it with me this time. This time, I'm going to be victorious. Now, why is this critical in the context of what we're talking about for this year? Theme 2022 is making moves and I will rely on my experience as an educator. When it is time for a student to make a move to the next grade, to the next level, there is a test. It is not a test over new information. It is a test over former or past or already covered information with the intention being that this time when you see the information, you ought to know better and you ought to do better. Y'all, it is time. We're in theme 2022 and I've told you guys that God has blessings in the pipeline that are already in place for us. This time when the test circles back, this time when the issue circles back, this time when the temptation circles back, this time when the person circles back, Back. This time when that moment circles back, somebody say it with me this time, this time I'm going to be victorious. And I'm saying these things seriously, you all, because when we progress through this year, I was going to say by the time we get to the end of the year, this year, no, as we progress throughout this year, there are blessings in the pipelines for us. And this year we want to receive it. So what does that look like this time when God um, allows those, those, those moments to come where I could step through or I could stutter step. This time I'm stepping through. This time when God allows me to negotiate a contract and to name my value and my worth and I normally back down or I ask for lower than what I desire. This time I'm going to say my real number. This time when someone comes into my life who I know is a person God has already said is not good for me whether that is a platonic friendship whether that is a potential relationship whatever that dynamic is. This time I'm going to keep my face flicks and I'm going to continue on the path that God has set for me this time when the Lord allows me to go before them and speak. My knees may shake, but I'm going to open my mouth and say what thus says the Lord. This time when God allows me to speak to that person who normally I would make excuses for their behavior, or I would tolerate and I would, I would acquiesce to certain things. This time I'm going to stand in my truth. Whatever that is for you, go ahead and declare this time because many of us know the areas where we struggle. Many of us know if we're people pleasers and and we say yes when we really mean no. And we say no when we really want to say yes. This time, I will stand in my truth. For each of you on today, I'm going to invite you to do the work with me this morning. Go ahead, if you're bold enough to or desire to, just to put it into the atmosphere. This time, put your this time there. For some of you, you're saying, I've been procrastinating about finishing this book or finishing this project or getting my health in order. This time, like mean it, this time time, I am going to pass this test. Educators understood that at the end of this season, if I'm really going to allow you to transition from eighth grade into high school or fifth grade into middle school, this time you have to pass the test so that you can go to the next level. So I literally felt sensed in my spirit, the spirit of the living God saying, this time y'all, you're going to revisit some things that are going to come before you again. And let me give you tangible examples of what that looked like for our faith siblings. I shared last evening and perhaps it cut out on the video. I, I didn't, I didn't hear this part about how, when God was bringing the children of Israel out of Egypt, y'all remember this, they came to the Red Sea, right? They came to the Red Sea and the Red Sea parted. And they walked through on dry land and those waters came crashing back down and killed their enemies and all of this stuff. And they got out, y'all, and it says that Miriam started beating the tambourine and they had this praise break. And y'all, then after that, things fell apart. So we don't judge them because many of us understand what it feels like to like get to a New Year's celebration and you're shouting and you're rejoicing and you're believing God for what is to happen in the next year. And Lord, the next year comes, honey. Y'all know 2019, 2020 made most of us feel that way. 
they're like, man, I had these big dreams and these big visions and I was crossing over into my promised land and the promised land didn't give what it was supposed to give. Things did not work out like I had intended. So when we get to this place, right, the Israel, the children of Israel have crossed over the Red Sea. They had a praise party, honey, and they were supposed to go over into Canaan, 11 days journey, and it was a whole 40 years y'all 40 whole years and people have died off and generations have passed and Moses and them don't even get to go in the promised land now get this this is a piece now the issue circles back around to them so now they've come back around again Deshonda they've come back around again and God has allowed Joshua to go over and spy it all out and this time Joshua says this time give me my mountain he is a fool 80 years older I mean 40 years older he's 80 years old from that 40 year old man who went in and said we can do it when the other folks doubted but this time when they came around he said give me my mountain and God gets uh, gets ready to allow them to go over into Canaan and guess what happens y'all they walk up on a body of water now, when we came out 40 years ago, we, we, we stumbled up on that good red sea. Now we've come back around and that same issue is right here in our faces. And they are there at the river Jordan. They are there at the river Jordan. So water was there 40 years ago. And now we're back to the place of our promised land. And here comes water all over again. But I tell you, my God, my God. This time, when they walked across the Jordan, y'all, they didn't start, no, nobody started saying, well, you know what, we done, um, we done been through a body of water before, and y'all know how that worked out for us. When we got over to the other side, didn't nothing happen. We was shouting and dancing and praising and this, and then we didn't even get to go in because we was fussing and arguing and this. So, see, they finally had got themselves together. And this time, y'all, if you were to read that story, when they made it to the river of Jordan and the water began to be where they could cross over, the Bible says, that they put stones in the river of Jordan, reminding themselves of the times that God had come through for them. This time, instead of complaining and arguing and bickering, they put a stone and then they said, for the time that he allowed manna to fall from heaven. See yourself in that story, right? This time when the body of water was there, there was no fear. There was no running from enemies. This time they were picking up stones and putting them into the water. And somebody said, for the time that he allowed manna to come from heaven for the time that he allowed water to come out of the rock get a stone for the time that he allowed us to safely see a pillar of fire by night get a stone for the time that he was the cloud by day get a stone for the time that he allowed quail to come so that we could eat of meat because we were tired of onions and garlic for get a stone see instead of allowing that place that issue to become a place of being bogged down and complaining they used that issue and they talked to that issue and they picked up stones and they reminded themselves of how God had been faithful in this type of issue and in this type of circumstance before and this time when they crossed over they went into their Canaan land so I'm telling somebody today I'm telling myself today I'm telling you today brace yourself and when an issue that has been in your life before circles back around, don't perceive it through the lens of fear. Perceive it through the lens of this is my final test. And this time, y'all talking to myself, and this time when that issue faces me, this time I'm going to handle it. This time I'm not going to play with it. This time I will not be manipulated by it. This time I will not walk in fear. This time I will not have a need to fit in so that I settle for less than what I am deserving of. This time I'm going to stand up for my worth. This time I'm going to let my yes be yes and my no be no. This time I'm going to run through the open door. This time I'm going to receive what God has for me. Everybody put down in the comments this time. This time. So in our theme 2022, making moves, y'all, it is time to make our move to the next level. This time, we're going to pass the test. So those two summary nuggets are number one, invite daddy God into your details. And number two, this time, when issues that you have faced before circle back, it's not that the issue has changed. It's that you have changed. Somebody say, I've been doing the work. I've changed. I've become more clear about who I am and who I'm called to be. I've become more clear about what God, Daddy God is saying over my life. Somebody say it with me one more time, this time. 
this time, this time. It's so good to see so many of you queens awake this morning and, and having called other people. I see y'all saying this time. Sarah, this time you're going to pass the test. This time, Sharon. This time, Arlinda. This time, Sharice. I'm cheering you on. Y'all going to another queen and help me. This time, uh, Miss Mary. This time. This time, Lily. This time, Leia. This time, y'all. This is our time. And so here's what we're going to do. We're going to pivot quickly, y'all. Um, tandem on with me from that particular word and understand this then when we come back to this story that we've been talking about from mark chapter 2 somebody go ahead and put it there and y'all hang tight with me because we're about to go somewhere with this time right and the details this time my god my god my god my god my god my god who my god y'all feel the weight of god <laughs> that's what i miss about physical settings where you could feel the weight of god because this is his word y'all this is his rainbow word for us this is god's living word for us when you know that god is speaking for what you're facing for what you're about to face for what you just came out of whoo for somebody god wants you to know while many of us are preparing and bracing ourselves and getting ready to pass the test for somebody i'm speaking through divine faith and hearing god and sensing God saying, you just passed the test. Oh my God, my God. I don't know who that is for, but you just came out of your test. And daddy, God wants you to know that you passed the test. That issue just had just circled back in your life. And you already know who I'm talking to. I don't, but you do. That issue had just visited you. That issue had just given you an invitation to rejoin into some activity. And you said, no, are you persevered? Are you passed? Are you pressed through? The word from your good daddy God on this morning is you just passed the test. Come on, somebody, y'all, if we were in the room together, we would clap our hands and celebrate that person. So give them some hearts or some thumbs up. And and, and we, we, your sisters, your community, we salute you on this morning. You just passed your test. My God, you just passed your test, sis. <laughs> you just passed your test. And I'm Terry Moo for you. I don't know who I'm speaking to this morning, but you know, an opportunity just presented itself to you. And the old you would have handled it a different way. But this you have been doing the work. And this you just passed the test. Receive that on this morning. This you just passed the test. And for the rest of us, because I feel myself, Arlinda, bracing myself, like whatever this is, somebody say, come on then. <laughs> what we going to do? Let's do it then. Come on. Come on then. If this is about to be the tango between me and you so that I can go to my next level, so that I can go to my next glory, so that I can experience God's blessings that are in the pipeline for me, then somebody said, let's do it then. <laughs> somebody said with me, let's do the thing then. Let's do this because I am ready to go to my next path, uh, place in God. I'll be coming back on here testifying that I passed the test. Is anybody out there saying it with me? If I, if this is the, honey, I'm glad. Give me the test early. <laughs> Give me the test early. Normally in, in a school year, and we're actually getting very close to that part. Educators are getting ready, honey. We holding on for spring break. And then shortly after that, we're going to be having them finals and it's going to be time for folk to wrap up and go. So if anybody else is like me on this morning and you're saying, okay, then when God begins to talk about issues circling and it's all about um, passing this test, and is it anybody else? I see Cheryl, Cheryl Pelham saying, let's do this then. I see Tawanda talking about, let's do it then. Let's go ahead and handle it. If it's, if it's, if it's, a, if it's a, a family situation that I need to address, then come on with it then. If it's something on my job and my unemployment, I'm here for it today. If it's someplace that I've got to speak up regarding my finances, I got time today. Somebody said, let's do this then. In. Let's go ahead and pass this test because there are blessings in the pipeline for me and I ain't got time to play with nobody. <laughs> Y'all, I got some makeup time I got to do. You understanding me? So here's the deal then. We've been talking in Mark chapter 2. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Y'all said let's do this. We've been talking about Mark chapter 2 and we were discussing how for the blessings that God has in the pipeline for us, we are going to need our connections to get to them. I'm going to keep telling my, my quiet sis, my I don't want to fool with no women sis, the I don't trust nobody sis. I'm telling you, queen, you're going to have to do better in 2022. And I'm saying that to you with love. You're going to have to do better in 2022 because there are some blessings in the pipeline for you and you will not receive the 
them unless you learn how to connect to folk. Now, this is the thing. He who has friends must first show himself friendly. Some of you who are keep struggling with that issue is because you're self-protecting. And I pray that God begins to jump over your walls today and allow you to hear this with your spirit, man. There are blessings in the pipeline for you and you will not receive them without your divine covenant connections. Deshonda referenced it as covenant connections last week. So last week we talked, so we said that how do we do that? People have told us our whole lives to make good friends. How do we do that? Last week, we talked about conversations. We talked about conversations. This week, we're jumping on over to Carrie. If you didn't hear the piece about conversations, you need to. It's critical. It's foundational. It's foundational to understand how to listen and navigate relationships to begin to identify people who are good for your life. Number two, though, is Carrie. Carrie. So I want you to put this, this uh, question in your own mind and think about it. Carrie, who carries you? Who can carry you? Before you get deep in spirit and say, okay, nobody handle, somebody can. Who carries me? Everybody type that. If we were sitting in a space, I would have us begin to think about that. Who carries me? Who carries me? Now, the Lord, the Lord gives us examples in faith siblings. That's what I call the folk in the Bible because they're real people. Those are our faith siblings. He gives us examples in the faith in the Bible through our faith siblings. And God does not have any wasted people, any wasted scenarios, any wasted examples. So when God shows us things through our faith siblings, even though sometimes we perhaps would like to be exempt, he's letting us know things that can happen in life and how we are to navigate them. So when we're in Mark chapter two, we are looking at this man whose physical body has been paralyzed, y'all. Hear me now, hear me. This physical, his physical body has been paralyzed. We can then only imagine what has happened to his hopes and to his dreams. If any of you've ever been in any type of incident that has caused a part of your physical body to be impacted, you can understand how, for me, it was just a broken finger. I promise you, this finger still acts up to this day. I, I, I tell you there were moments in the process of therapy and being in a cast when I needed people to help carry my plate or open a door. There were moments when it was so sore that it, it, it hurt just for you to like nick it. I remember one time being in service and I'm a hugger, a two-arm hugger at that. And I reached a hug and the person barely tapped. And y'all, my eyes smarted with tears and I was trying not to cry because I didn't want her to feel bad, but it hurt that much. And I'm only saying that to say, and that was just his finger. I felt at moments like I needed to just go sit down somewhere and get out of the way and isolate myself and be still. And that was just this finger. I had to adjust what I wore because I couldn't put a coat over the cast and I couldn't put on my cute dresses because my sleeve and I didn't want to cut all my stuff. So then I started wearing some of the similar items over and over again. And so if, if all of those adjustments were needed just because this finger was broken, I can only imagine what would happen in his mind and in his heart when his entire lower extremities were paralyzed. You understand me? If you've ever had a broken foot or a broken arm or a broken hand or a broken ankle or a hurt knee, it ain't got to be broke. But you understand the inconvenience that that particular uh, nuance caused in your life. Then let's be sympathetic and place ourselves in the shoes of our paralyzed brother right? Our faith sibling. So he was in a space, y'all. Huh. Hmm. But that God sent help. There would have been very little he could do. Perhaps in a space where there was very little that he was even hopeful of doing. But somebody say, Carrie, honey, then here come these folk, y'all. 
Y'all know, I, I can move behind these people because I can, y'all, this hand was about to take me out. So I'm imagining this, this, this guy, y'all. So he's dealing with his male identity and he's dealing with his, his inabilities and, and we don't hear of a wife and a kid. So perhaps he feels shortchanged in life and then you can't walk and you're begging and y'all, here come these folk. Here come these folk, y'all, who hears about a potential solution to his struggle, who hear about a solution to his story, who hear about a solution to his scars. Here come these folk to wonder. Here come these folk to carry him, to carry him. Here come these folk for whom he didn't have no money to round them up. Here comes these folk to whom the Bible does not talk about how he called them or negotiated with them. These folk come, y'all. Not these folk who say, if you need something, call me. Here come these folk to carry him. To give him to be the bridge that brokers his struggle with the solution. To be the bridge that broker his struggle with a solution. His scar with an answer. His story with a solution. Here come these folk to carry him. His blessing, his healing, his breakthrough, his Jesus was always in the pipeline. But there was no way for him to get to that without the folk who would carry him. Somebody say with me, who carries me? Who carries me? Who carries me? How have I structured my life to be engaged with folk who when my stuff is too heavy for me to pack, they will come for me? Who carries me? That's a sobering question. That's a sobering question because what the Lord is showing us through this faith sibling is that life will dab us some blows, y'all. Life will dab us some blows, y'all, for whom, for which our own physical bodies can't even get us out of it. Dear, life will throw you some stuff for which your own, thank you, Jesus, says, do not lift you. Life will toss some stuff in your heart and at your emotions for which they suffocate your own hallelujahs. I'm telling you the truth. Anybody who's been in this Christian walk any length of time understands there are some moments when folks say praise your way out and ain't no praise going to lift you in and of yourself. And you need folk who will come and say to you, I'm telling you, one of my dearest girlfriends forever will be Rachel. Rachel Lockett, many of you know her. When she said to me, Gina, are you, are you praying about this particular thing? And I said, girl, I'm so tired of praying about that. Let me tell you, I'm so tired of talking about that. I'm so tired of them putting all on my head. I'm so tired, dear, of turning around three times. I'm so tired of praying about it that, girl, no, not really. You know what my sister said? She didn't give me no lecture <laughs> about continuing to believe God. Sister said, and don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I'm praying for you. I got you. On that prayer request, I will pack it until we see it come to pass. Who carries you? Who carries you? So let me do this thing real quick, and then I'm going to help us, right? This is what I have to speak over y'all. Strong powerful, amazing, self-sufficient, re <clears throat> reliable, and any other word that we are resilient, tough, conquering women. This is what I need to speak over you this morning. And you just got to receive it in grace and receive it with love. You are going to allow yourself the space to at moments in your life, allowing yourself to be carried. You will decease from building lies that allow you to boast in being completely self-sufficient and relying on yourself. I speak over you what daddy God intended from the beginning of time. Follow me. When Eve showed up on the scene, God had already put a covering in place for her. God had already made provision for her food with the garden. 
God had already given the man who was for her life an assignment to work. God had already fixed her environment so that she could exist in it with support, with resources. And many of us have lived in lives that do not mirror God's original intent. And I have said it before and I have said it again. Just because you're strong enough to survive does not mean that was God's original intent for your life. Just because you can make it with nothing does not mean that that's God's best for your life. We are going to come against that spirit that allows us to get trophies and awards for surviving and being good at what God never intended for us. God has designed us in such a way that there are supposed to be supplemental things that help to make our lives better. And I am declaring over you on this morning, you will be carried at the low points of your life. People will come through and show up for you. I am I'm declaring that you will no longer have to hobble when you're sick, that you will no longer have to struggle when you're broken, that God will undergird you with folk who will show up in your lives at the right time. Your testimony will not be that I always show up for other people, but they do not show up for me and I'm okay with that. You are not okay with that. I declare over your life that God will put people in place who will carry you and they won't drop you. Somebody received that on this morning. I will be carried and not dropped. I will be carried and not dropped. I will allow myself to experience being carried and not dropped. I will allow myself to experience solid relationships, good women for my lives, accountability partners and mentors. I will be carried and not dropped. I will, I declare it. I declare it that a piece of your blessing that is in the pipeline are people who can carry you and not drop you. What does that look like? You're going to be able to tell your hardest prayer request to folk and never hear it repeated. You're going to be able to say when you're not doing well, your automatic answer will not be, I am blessed and I am fine. You will be able to say, I am depressed or I am going through a depression. I am sad. I am feeling low. This thing is about to break me. It is my struggle. And your sister, your queen, your accountability partner, your prayer partner will cover you. They will carry you. You will be in spaces where you will be allowed to weep until your heart has, has, has cried all that it needs to cry. See, this is the reason that many of us are walking around here sick and broken and discouraged because we're still having to mask what we really feel and what we really are going through. But you are going to be carried and not dropped in this season. That is part of your blessing that is in the pipeline. Do you receive it on this morning? I will be carried and not dropped in Jesus' name. What does that look like for us women? Help me. Help me right here in the comments. If somebody was able to carry you and not drop you, what would that look like for you? Would it look like them being able to supply a need and then not chunk it up in your face every time you, you, you interact with them? Would it be... A would it be them being able to give you their word that they're going to show up at 6 o'clock and they actually get there at 545? Would it look like them being able to loan you some money and not harass you every every other day like they don't already know you've been laid off of your job and you got these children that you're trying to, to take care of. Would it look like you being able to whisper that your heart is still grieving and they not, they not Bible beat you by saying you ought to be better than that by now. Would it look like them being able to just come sit in silence and let you just find and gather your thoughts? What would it look like what would it look like? Would it look like them being able to give you an encouraging word? And when you say, I got it, they come back again and give you one more. And they don't let up until they see, hey, my goodness, my God. Would it look like them being able through their discernment to pick up that your spirit is low? That your spirit is low and it doesn't matter how hard you're grinning on the outside. Something is off about you and they worry you and they get on your nerves until they get you to your breakthrough. What would it look like for you to be carried and not drop? I am declaring for everybody who's on this line on this today, in whatever way, in whatever way you need to be carried and not dropped, that God has already put that in the pipeline for you. God, I feel 
God, <laughs> these are the moments when I miss me. I feel God sitting his weighted glory on the call, y'all, on the line. Somebody say, I receive it on this morning that I will be carried and not dropped. So here's the deal, Dia. Here's the deal, Sister Mary. Listen, when the folks show up with the mat, <laughs> you better get yourself sufficient, resilient. I can do it by myself. I got this. You better get your, st your stubborn self up on the mat. Do you hear what I'm saying on this morning? You know I'm saying that to you in love, dear Pooh. Listen, you ain't got nothing to prove up over here. The fact that you're still up over here in 2022 with your right mind, you've already proved it. So when the folks show up on the mat with the mat, y'all, we got to do our parts. We got to get up on the mat, Sherry. We got to quit. Tell my, I'm fine. When she say, how you doing? When God starts bringing these covenant connections and they're trying to help carry you, you got to do your part to wonder. You got to get on the mat. Listen, this is what I'm telling y'all. Because folk should not have to fight you to help you. Folks should not have to tussle with you to do what's in your best interest. Folks shouldn't have to be pushed and shoved and treated any kind of way trying to serve you. So when God gives you covenant connections, get up on the mat. <laughs> Y'all type that in all caps like Lily be doing. Put that in all caps. Get up on this mat, girl. Get up on this mat. Because uh, cause unlike popular ways of being elsewhere, over here in this community, I'm not trying to get over on you. I'm not trying to manipulate you. I'm not trying to use you. Come on, somebody. I'm not trying to, to help you so I can throw it in your face. Somebody say that with me. When I show up in your life, if I ask you how you're doing, I really do mean how you're doing. If I reach to hug you, I really am trying to embrace you. If I lift up my hands to extend something to you, girl, get your hands out here and take what I'm trying to give. Get up on this mat. Get up on this mat. Get up on this mat. People should not have to try to read your mind to help you. Not your covenant folk. Now, I'm not saying put your stuff out there to any and everybody. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about in this season where God is already saying to us, you're going to need one another to get to what I got for you. Then we ought to be expecting God to send us the folk that we need to help us get to where we're trying to go. When they show up, all I'm telling you is get up on the mat. Get up on this mat. Now, somebody say this with me, because I will not drop you. Come on. Come on. I'm not going to drop you. Y'all say that. Go up under a sister's name who perhaps has not heard that in a long time. And tell them, I will not drop you. Let's do it even better. The God in me will not drop you. The God in me will not drop you. Find a sister on this line and you tell them that. The God in me will not drop you. Because I, I understand y'all. I know a whole lot of us been dropped a whole lot of times. For little old silly stuff. Y'all, let's make this, connect, this commitment. Come on. Let's be better women to one another. See, many of us can receive this for our lives. We want it for us. But do you give it to others? We want it for us. But do you give it for us? I'm going to wrap up. Because I'm following the Lord here. So in the story, in the story, these four. So I'm asking God for your core. I'm asking God for your core. It doesn't have to be these. It doesn't have to be four. But I am asking God for your core. Thank y'all for doing that. I see y'all telling each other the God in me will not drop you. You need your core. I'm asking God for your core. I would say, y'all, let's hold hands <laughs> right here. And let's pray that God sends us all our core, our core. So what does a core look like? I'm going to give you some quick descriptors. Y'all go back and read with me, please. Mark chapter two, because we have one more nugget from Mark chapter two. 
and we will cover it next Monday, last last Monday of, of, of this month. Read Mark chapter two so when we deep dive, you can see this, but here's what that carry looked like. Here's what that carry looked like. Y'all get this, dude. Woo, raise your hands if you've ever been through a low. Huh. So I can move for him, y'all. This dude over there laying up. Y'all imagine it, imagine it, imagine you. In some situation, this dude is over there laying up, y'all. Here comes these four to carry him. Somebody say it with me, give me my core. Give me my core. This is what a core is. These four come to carry him. They're the core. Y'all. Well, think about this. They show up. They show up with a mat. This core shows up, y'all, with a mat. Basically symbolizing they show up with what they think you need to get to your next place. They show up with a mat. Y'all get that? They don't go ask him what he need. They don't expect him. They show up with what they believe is a part to his solution. You starting a business, sis? It's going to be a clinic. I got the chairs. <laughs> sis, you trying to get a new car? Look, I ain't got the money to buy you the whole car, but look, I got this gas car. You say you writing a book? Oh, sis, listen, I can at least help edit. That's what Lena would do for me all the time. I can at least read it and try to find the mistakes, some mistakes and help you with that part. Since you say you and your husband just need a night out, baby, I can't pay for the meal, but I, I, I can babysit. They show up with a part of what they believe to be his solution. Y'all, that's what a court looks like. They show up with a part of what they believe is his solution, y'all. And then they coordinate efforts. So they show up, y'all. They show up with a part. Y'all get that? You following me? Then they somehow lift him, y'all. He can't even help him. If you've ever packed a baby who's asleep, baby, it's a difference between packing a baby who's awake and then that one that's asleep because that's dead weight. That's that heavyweight, y'all. So it's inconvenient. They pack him and his struggle. Then the Bible says they carry him through the town. You get that? His core don't get shame when they are helping walk him through the situation. <laughs> y'all, I'm teaching y'all this morning. His core hold their head up high as they walk with him in front of folk through his situation. His core, they don't get embarrassed. The Bible don't say they put hoodies on their head and they start ducking and hiding. They up in here like this, our friend. <laughs> he got a struggle. I done come up with part of his solution and I'm going to walk with him through it. And it don't matter who sees us. It don't matter who's looking. This dude right here is my dude. Somebody say, give me my core. If he going to be paralyzed in shame, I'm going to be right here in him, in here with him. Then it was work, y'all. <laughs> it was work. It was work, y'all. They had to carry him. They had to go up the stairs. They had to pull off the roof. Give me my core. Those people for whom being in my life is not always convenient, but they show up to do the work in our relationship. It's not always one-sided. It's not always for them. It's work and it's not easy, but they stay in my life. Then the Bible says, y'all, and there's so much more that I could tell you about it. Look, look y'all. They handled him in such a way that his wounded self would not get more wounds. Have you ever been going through some stuff and the folk who was supposed to be encouraging you and lifting you, baby, you, you wanted to put them out the room because what they were saying and what they were doing was making your situation heavier, was making your sadness deeper, was causing you to cry harder. They were wounding your wounds, y'all. Oh my God, my God. They handled him in such a way that they did not continue to wound the one who was already wounded. Say it with me, give me my core. See, this only matters to folk who knows what it could have been like to the person who's saying, I know what it's like to be in something and the folk who were supposed to lift me made my brokenness more broke. <laughs> 
talking to real folk. Yolanda, you with me? You understand? Somebody said, give me my core. But here's the deal. Not to wrap up. Y'all, that part that we talked about last week, it says Jesus looked at their faith. Y'all get that? Jesus looked at their faith. Somebody say, give me my core. Jesus looked at their faith. Somebody say, Jesus, give me my core. Jesus looked at their faith. Y'all, Jesus looked at their faith. So here's what I want you to know. Y'all get this. huh? This is what I want you to understand. When Jesus says, when the Bible says Jesus looked at their faith, what was their faith assigned to? Y'all give me my core. What I understood in a deeper way is that as these folk had watched their friend laying on the roadside all of those years, as the, the, these guys had watched their friend who possibly stank because he couldn't bathe regularly and get up and make it down to no pool or to no river. They didn't have no running water with, with tubs. As these friends went with this map that they got from somewhere and they strategized about hearing Jesus was in town when these friends determined that we're going to carry him and we're going to carry his heavy weight and we're going to carry the struggle of his weight when these friends determined that we're going to walk through this town and everybody's going to be watching and looking at us but we're going to stick with him anyway somebody say stick with me anyway I promise I'm going to come out stick with me anyway I promise I'm going to get up Somebody say, stick with me anyway when I'm low. I promise you, I'm going to get to my breakthrough. Stick with me anyway when they made up their minds. That regardless of what people were saying and doing, we're going to stick with him anyway. And when they got to the house and the folks said, ain't no room in here. Somebody said, but we're still not going to turn back this court. So we're going to go up the stairs. Somebody, they, the Jesus said he looked at their faith when he laid it up to the rooftop, y'all. And they began to tear off the tiles and to let him down. Jesus looked at their faith. Where was their faith a sign? This is what I came to realize. They always saw him walk. Y'all can hardly get, they always saw him walking. Y'all, they didn't do all of that to play games from the time that they went with the match. This core always saw him healed. This core always saw him putting one step in front of the other. This core always saw him walking. That's why they did what they did. He was in a state that the rest of the world could look at and say was crippled and paralyzed and broken. But this core always saw him walking. You got to get you a core who can see you when you can't see yourself. I declare that over you that you will have a core that can see you when you can't see yourself. This core always saw him running. This core always saw him winning the marathon. This core always saw him skipping and hopping and leaping. This core saw him walking and Jesus looked at their faith and said, as unto their faith, so let it be. Somebody say, give me my core. Give me my core that can always see me as a business owner. Give me the core that can see me married. Give me the core that can see me having my children. Give me the core that sees my children being released. Give me the core that sees me with finances. Give me the core that sees me as an author or as a producer or as a, a chaplain or a ministry leader. Give me my core. Give me the folk who can see more in me than I can see in myself and shows up with a solution to get me not to where I see, but to where they see. Give me my core. Huh. Y'all can get deal. I can get them running around for myself. Somebody said with me, give me my core. Carry. A core that can carry me. Not this current me, y'all. Give me the core that can carry me, the me that God created me to be. And I will wrap up with that, y'all. Because see, this core was not carrying the current him. This core was not carrying the paralyzed and the broken and the stinking and the non-functional and the no, no family around and this broken man. This, this core was carrying the person that they could see walking. Give me the core. And why is that critical? Because when you have that kind of core, 
and you mess up and say your choice words, but because they see you as the pastor of the ministry or as the teacher in the ministry, they cover you because they're not dabbling about this current you and posting videos of you in your stupor and in your mess and in your mistakes. They carry you and they cover you because they see you for where you're going. They see you and who you're trying to be. They see you past your poor choice and past your mistake and past that mess up and past that one night that you got drunk or that one night that you that you slipped up or that 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 poor judgment decision. They don't just carry the current you. They carry the future you and they put you and all your stuff at the feet of Jesus because they believe and who you're called to be. Somebody say, carry me. Carry me. Carry me. Hey, let that be our prayer request as we close. We're done, y'all. Oh, my God. We're done, y'all. Y'all put it. Let that, that's our prayer today. Everybody just put that in thing. Carry me. Because hey. I promise, I promise you've not seen the best parts of me. Carry me. Y'all put your own statements in there. Carry me. Because I promise there's more to me than what you see. Carry me. Carry me because there's a piece of me that has yet to be revealed. Carry me. Carry me because the glory of the Lord rests on my life. And sometimes it overwhelms me and who he's called me to be. So carry me. Carry me. See me in the future walking out who he's destined me to be. Carry me. Carry me. Oh my God. Y'all, there's so much more I can say. We're going to stop right there. Come on. That's our part right there, Sarah. I love you. I miss you. I wanted to call you. I'll do that, okay? Carry me. Somebody just put that. Carry me. <laughs> I'm telling you, there are dreams inside of me. And I'm sometimes afraid. And I don't feel like I can manifest that in and of myself. Somebody say, carry me. Somebody else is saying, there are some issues that keep trying to bump into my heart and to make me bitter and to make me hold grudges and to make me not feel my best. And I promise, I keep trying to lay it down at Jesus' feet. Somebody say, carry me. Carry me. Because I'm trying to be who he can. I keep trying to forgive. I keep trying to move on. Carry me. Carry me. Carry me. Huh. Carry me. Carry me. <laughs> if I wasn't serious about this thing, I wouldn't even be up on a Bible study, right? I'm serious about God and my relationship. I know it may not look like it in all areas of my life. Just carry me. Because I'm going to be <laughs> who he created me to be. Yeah. So, I'll pause right here, y'all. Because it's time. I love all of y'all. Hey, Dad Simon. I love all of y'all. And I want to take the time to greet everybody. But I'm going to do this real quick. I'm going to do this real quick. Because this is what's coming. And I don't want it to slip under the radar. March 5th, we have a welcation down at the center. I'm going to keep hosting down at the center because I'm supposed to. This is specifically for women who you understand. You're in a season of decluttering spiritually you are in a season of decluttering y'all know how we declutter our houses or we declutter our, car, our closets we declutter our cars it means we start getting rid of unnecessary stuff there are many of you transparently like myself who are in a season of decluttering spiritually jim put that in there for me decluttering spiritually it means that you are taking a moment to realign yourself, you know who you are, with the voice of God. You're taking a moment to resettle and be clear, recalibrate about your relationship with him. God put it on my heart to allow this vocation that's coming on March the 5th to be about that. And here is a quick, quick, very quick Bible reference. Do you remember when the little girl was laying in the room and Jesus showed up to the house and when he went into the room, the people began to say, she's dead, she's dead. 
And they were having all of these conversations and noise in the religious sector. And Jesus said, she's not dead. She's just sleep. And the Bible says that the people literally began to laugh and talk. And Jesus said, what did he say, y'all? Put them out of the room. See, even Jesus, in the midst of getting ready to work a miracle, he's, because he understood She's on pause. She done took a quick time out. She's being non-responsive and numb. She's done with this religious jargon and chatter and all that you all are doing. And I'm about to work a miracle in her life. But y'all's voices and y'all sounds, it's not productive for this atmosphere. Get out of the room. For many of us, we are in that place. And where we have in organized settings, endured a lot of chattering and talk, and some of it becomes an irritant to our very spirits. We're in a stage where we need to hear the voice of the Lord clearly about our next, not with stuff, but with him. We are intentionally decluttering spiritually. We don't want fluff and stuff. We don't want quick cliches. We don't want a whole lot of enthusiasm with no, with no uh, signs and wonders following that. We want to hear the voice of the Lord. March the 5th, if I am talking to you and you already know whether I am or not, we have about five more spaces and I will close it so that the setting remains intimate and focused. But the session will specifically focus on hearing the voice of the Lord and hearing your own. Hearing the voice of the Lord and hearing your own as we declutter spiritually. The information is already posted somewhere in the community and I'll try to remember to post it again. Jen, please remind me. But I know that I'm supposed to tell some of you that because a few more of you are supposed to join us on March the 5th. All right, so that's that. Now let's get back over here and pray and get ready to go. Let's go. Father, thank you. Hmm. Father, thank you. Somebody just say that with me. Father, thank you. Daddy God, thank you. See, he's already done it. God would not position us to have this lesson and then leave us without these people. Father, thank you. Thank you for the core. <laughs> thank you for my core. Come on, y'all. Come on, receive it. Thank you for my core. Come on, receive it in your spirit. Thank you for my core. Because see, I realized when I was about to pray for it, that God is reminding me it's already done. Thank you for my core. Come on, y'all. Come on, receive it. Thank you for my core. Come on, in your own, in your own words, however you want to thank him. Thank you for my core. Thank you for my core. Come on, until your spirit receives it. Thank you for my core. Thank you for my core. I thank you because your word has already declared that before we spoke, you would answer. Thank you for my core. Thank you for allowing me to exist, listening and looking, ready to receive my core. Thank you for my core. Thank you for my core. Thank you for my core. Somebody say it out loud in your own home. Thank you for my core. Not God, will you sin? God, will you do? Thank you for my core. Thank you for my core. Thank you for the blessings that are in the pipeline. And thank you for giving me the people who will help me get there. Thank you for my core. Thank you for my mentors. Thank you for my accountability group. Thank you for my sister that will sit closer than a brother. Thank you for my friends. Thank you for my love relationship. Thank you for my spouse. Thank you for my core. Come on, y'all. Pray for yourself. Thank you for my core. Thank you for helpers who will help me to fulfill vision. Thank you for a support network. Thank you for resources. Thank you for my spiritual father. Thank you for my core. Thank you for my parents. Thank you for my friends. Thank you for my church family. Thank you for good workers. Thank you for employees. Thank you for the, the person who's going to recognize my gifts and my talents. Thank you for the people who will open doors for me. Thank you for my core. Thank you for the person who will give seed into my vision and to my mission. Thank you for the person who will pull my coattail and tell me when that right there, that's not right. Thank you for that friend who will tell me the truth. Thank you for my core. Somebody say that. Thank you for my core. I receive my core. I receive 
my core and thank you that I am a core. Come on, y'all. <laughs> we don't have no one-sided stuff coming on. Thank you that I am a core. Thank you that I am that faithful friend. Thank you that I know how to hold a secret. Thank you that I know how to keep a prayer request to myself. Thank you that somebody's uh, illness or lack of being well is safe with me. Thank you that people can trust me. Thank you that I'm a person of integrity. Thank you that when I give my yes, I mean yes. And when I say my no, I mean no. Thank you that people can count on me. Thank you that I am a core in the name of Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, oh God. Y'all, we got to go. I love y'all. <laughs> I'm over time trying to download all this stuff, but remember the nuggets that are at the top. Hopper, Shonda, good to see you. Thank you. Um, look, I'm saying thank you. Thank you for my core. Thank you for the community, y'all. Go and give me some love up in here. Y'all know this community is a core, honey. If this community has been a core to you, go and put some hearts and some loves on that, all right? Let's invite some other queens to join us. Um, again, remember the two nuggets at the top of the hour. I gave that at the top of the hour that the Lord dropped in my spirit about inviting him into your details. We're doing that this week. And when that stuff try to circle back, we talked about that. This time you're going to be victorious. And then the takeaway for this particular lesson for today is this whole thing about Carrie. God giving us our core. Y'all hug another queen friend by putting a heart under somebody's name. Lorena Baina, I love you too, girl. Um, tag Erica, wake her up. Um, tag some queen friends, invite them to join us. And then again, for those of you who know you're in a journey of spiritually decluttering, I'm telling you, that's what Wellcation March 5th is all about, right? We're going to do that thing. Tracy, if you want to come, girl, <laughs> you just up, you just text me, girl. Um, but yeah, it's going to be an amazing time. All righty. I love y'all. Y'all take care as always. I'm going to let y'all finish. Put it in the comments. What do I do? I'm making sure we own this thing together. As always, I... What y'all got? I'm going to see who gets it first. <laughs> I love you too, Chandra. Oh, you say post the cash app? I will. Thank you, Dia. It is dollar sign Dr. Gina Lynn. I appreciate you always wanted to sow a seed. Anybody else who want to hear that too? Uh, it's, it's, it's capital DR. I'm going to put it up there, but yes. Dollar sign Dr. Gina Lynn. You, are you tagging Gloria today, Lorena? That's cool. Here, I'm going to put it in right now. Dia, and then I'll go back and put it because I I be saying I'm gonna do a lot of stuff. And then I got to hold my word. I gotta hold my word. Dad Simon, good to see you. I hope you had a great birthday, sir. I love you. I'm gonna surprise visit you again. Okay, come out there. There it is. It's on the. Oh, that's not it. It didn't let me say it like I wanted to say it. Don't find my name, y'all, because it'll have my picture. Oh, very good, y'all. Got. It. I was waiting on somebody to say it. I honor the greatness in y'all too. I honor the greatness in you. Okay, I'm going to see if it'll let me do it that time. Okay, if you look for my comment, it has it spelled the right, Dia, and I'll put it at the top. All right, y'all take care. Have a fantastic week. All week long, let folk um, um, start checking your core, trying to see if folk, trying to be your core. Let them, let the good Lord get on that mat. Do, do right. Rhonda, you're here. Hey, friend, good to see you. Good to see you. Love you. All right, bye, y'all. Have a good rest of the day. I honor the greatness that's on the inside of you.